Hi, I'm Donna Joy Asher, founder of The Belief Builders, where I help entrepreneurs rewire their brains for success. If you're watching this, then there is a good chance that you are one of the small percentage of people who classify themselves as an entrepreneur. You're the one who doesn't enjoy working for somebody else. You feel trapped in a nine to five job, who loves the idea of the freedom an online income can bring and who gets excited by the thought of new things and change. If you nodded your head to at least one of those, keep listening to this because I am going to give you some more insight into how your brain works on a chemical level. Before I dive into the content of the video, I just want to say if you like this video, make sure you go ahead and click the little like button. It really does help with that YouTube algorithm and it's going to tell me what you like so I know what to make more of. If you really like me, please make sure to subscribe and click the little bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. Right, let's dive back in. While our entrepreneurial drive is what will ultimately allow us to create that life of true freedom, it will only happen if we understand some things about our brains. Because the very thing that can give us the freedom is also the very thing that can stop us from having it. Our brain is both our greatest asset and also our greatest weakness. So let's take a step back in time to our prehistoric ancestors so I can explain this a little better to you. So back in the caveman days, we would have been the ones that couldn't wait to get out of the cave. We would have been the ones in the hunting party, the ones looking for new ground. We would have been stimulated by the adventure and the challenge that came from the danger involved. And we would have been bored by having to do all those tedious tasks that had to be done to ensure survival, like planting fields or mending things or any task that had a mundane routine attached to it. We are the seekers designed to break new ground and to turn the impossible into the possible, which is awesome and exciting and so much fun until it isn't anymore. And then we get bored and move on, which is a major entrepreneur downfall. You see, as soon as something stops being exciting and stimulating, we come up with some logical for reason for why we should stop doing it, even when that is the thing we have been striving for years to achieve. We move on to the next challenge, the next thing, the next shiny object. And often we end up in a never ending cycle of creating and striving without ever achieving that dream life of abundance and freedom. So why is that? Well, I want to introduce you to your brain hormones. So meet dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and the endorphins. These are all part of the happy hormone gang. They make you feel good for doing certain things. So then there's cortisol, which is a protective hormone. Its job is to make you move away from things that might harm you by creating stress and anxiety. So in other words, it creates a stress and anxiety if it thinks something will harm you so that you will move away from it. So I want to tell you a little more about what each of these do so that you can identify when it is a brain hormone urging you to give up and when it was just a really sucky idea and that it is time to move on. So let's start with dopamine. So dopamine is released as a reward when we do something the brain considers good. It makes us feel happy and satisfied and good about ourselves. When we eat sugar, dopamine. When we make money, dopamine. Unless you have some underlying belief system that money is evil, then getting rid of the money might make you release dopamine. So the goal of dopamine is to make you seek reward and get what you need to survive. So the next hormone in the lineup is serotonin. Serotonin is linked to pride, confidence, and respect. It motivates you to climb the ladder inside your tribe so you can have more possibilities and be more influential. Serotonin is released when we do something that improves or shows our status. So for men, it tends to be through their ability to provide resources. For women, it is through social status and also their looks. So built into our DNA is the need to procreate and pass our genetics on. So men want to show how well they can provide, so big houses, fast, fancy cars, designer suits, etc. So they can attract the best female possible to procreate with. So think of um, like a peacock, okay? how it tries to attract females to it. So in response to this, 
women want to show that they are a suitable and powerful mate through their social status and how attractive they are. Now, before you throw rocks at me, you need to know that I'm not making this stuff up, right? It's hot wired into us. And yes, relax and breathe. We can overcome it. So if we know it is there subconsciously driving us, we can recognize where the impulses are coming from and override them consciously, which is the point of this video, right? So on to oxytocin. So this hormone is related to a feeling of safety, trust, belonging, and love. It encourages us to be part of the tribe, to be loved and trusted, because then our chance of survival is going to go up. So let's be honest here. As a species, we're pretty vulnerable. There's no hard outer exoskeleton, no spikes or venom or incredible speed, no massive size or strength or ability to leap tall buildings or fly. It's absolutely amazing we have survived as long as we have. And that reason is our amazing brains and the hormones that encourage us to stay safe and procreate. So being a loved and trusted part of the tribe was essential for survival. It meant others would go into battle for you or share their meek supply of food or take care of you when you were sick. So rock on oxytocin. Right, the last of the happy hormones are the endorphins. To be honest, they are more of a survival hormone than a happy one. They give us the ability to mask pain and create instead a feeling of euphoria. So every time I have had a near-death experience, and sadly I've had more than my fair share, I'm a little bit accident prone, but after I've had these accidents, I have ridden a wave of euphoria for weeks. So endorphins allow you to remove yourself from a threat so you can live to face another day. They are in fact very similar in molecular structure to morphine. So for those of you who are wondering where adrenaline fits into all of this, it is like an amplifier for the other hormones. It makes the effect of them stronger. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens to a caffeine addict's brain when they have a cup of coffee. So one, dopamine is released. As the body views this as a positive thing, therefore you are rewarded. Two, Serotonin is released, maybe it's because you can afford to buy your expensive cup of coffee every day without batting an eyelid, or maybe it's because you're using a super duper expensive coffee machine, whichever. You get rewarded for your status in being able to have that coffee. Three, if you are having your coffee with friends or family, oxytocin is released. Four, adrenaline is released by the caffeine itself, which amplifies all of the above hormones. So is it any wonder that people get addicted to their coffee? Now let's talk about cortisol. So cortisol is all about survival. It makes you stop and pay attention and encourages you to move away from danger. It does this by either increasing fear or creating stress and anxiety. So it makes you feel bad so that you will stop what you were doing and remove yourself from it. So for instance, when you needed food as a baby, your body released cortisol and this made you cry until you got the attention and the food that you needed. Okay, so let's bring this all into context for you to show you how these hormones play a part in blocking the very success that you want. So first, let's look at what it is that most entrepreneurs do want. So I talk to a lot of you guys, both within my business, but also working as a sales coach, and I am an entrepreneur, so I know my own brain pretty well. And this is what I know. Entrepreneurs want to create a life of freedom. So they want to live where they want, do what they want when they want, and they want to remove that glass ceiling, which is limiting what they can earn. So two, entrepreneurs want to live a life of purpose, which ultimately leads to them helping others. So that's pretty much it. If you dig down through everything that people talk about when they're creating their goals and dreams, that's what you get. Freedom and purpose. Okay, so now let's look at the two main ways that entrepreneurs fail to ultimately deliver those goals. So one, they never actually create the success that they want. Or two, they create what they set out to do, but then for whatever reason decide that's not what they actually want and they start doing something else instead. All of the stories that didn't finish up with the freedom and purpose fall into these two situations. They either never managed to do it or they did it, but then sabotaged it in some way so that they didn't have it anymore. You can call it what you want, but that's how it boils down. So why did these two things happen? Well, while our foundational belief system plays a massive part in this, normally by preventing us from being able to consistently take the actions that we need to do to get what we want, our brain hormones are also responsible. 
The problem is that our brains build up a tolerance to these hormones, which leads to us constantly having to find new ways to stimulate their release. So take, for instance, the decreasing pleasure sensation from eating something yummy. The first bite is always the best, right? That's because that first bite stimulated the biggest dopamine release. Each bite after that leads to less and less dopamine until our brain decides it doesn't need any more calories and it stops releasing it altogether. Now, let's say that instead of pizza, it was our business we were talking about. That initial rush of success, the first time a large amount of money hits your bank account, is going to create the biggest dopamine hit. You have to keep making more and more money to get that same feeling. The first time you have that five-figure month you've been daydreaming about is amazing. The rush of chemicals in your body makes you feel euphoric. Your brain rewards you with dopamine because having that money means you can get whatever you need. Then there is the serotonin that is released when you buy your first status symbol. Maybe it's a nice watch or a designer bag. You know that thing you long for that will mean that you have made it. Then, of course, there is the oxytocin that comes from being able to provide for your loved ones, for your tribe, buying gifts, taking them out for meals or on nice vacations. All of that stuff feels pretty darn good, doesn't it? So why is it? a year down the track that it just doesn't feel as good anymore? Why do we become discontent with what we have and start wanting more? Brain hormones, baby. The body is not, it's not releasing them anymore. It's not rewarding you unless you make more, spend more, have more. It leads to an ever-increasing need to be building bigger, having more, and this keeps on going to your body's limits. And here is the real kicker. When the rush of hormones wears off and we are in a depreciating level of appreciation, your brain will release cortisol, even if you have achieved what it was that you were aiming for, which means you start to feel anxious and stressed as your brain tries to get you to do something else so that it can start releasing the happy hormones again. So this is why so many entrepreneurs spend every cent they make and more. This is why that business that you dreamed of no longer brings you joy. This is why entrepreneurs logically decide that something isn't working, even though it is, and they walk away from it and start something new. Their brain hormones are tricking them into thinking that something is wrong. And when you combine these hormones with a shaky underlying belief system, or well, it's a pretty potent cocktail, you can convince yourself of whatever you need to, to get out of discomfort and into a place where the brain hormones are making you feel better again. That is why we get caught up in shiny object syndrome. That is why we're always searching for the next thing. That is why we give up before we make it. And that is why we self-sabotage ourselves so effectively and efficiently. The combination of our belief systems and our brain hormones. When you look at it from a prehistoric point of view where we did need to be continuously hunting and gathering and protecting our tribes, it kind of makes sense, right? But in the modern world we live in, it's all a little screwed up. So what can you do about it? Well, you need to be aware. Be aware of why something is making you feel all happy and successful. And correspondingly, be aware, aware of why it isn't. Why are you pushing your limits to build bigger? Is it just to satisfy your body's need for hormones or is it really something you want to do? Is it in you and your family's best interests or is it really just self-serving? Have a good think about what you really want in life. What do you really need? Are you stressing yourself out striving to get something you actually don't want or need? Are you stopping to smell the roses and enjoy the journey? Sure, life is an adventure and you can create whatever you want, but make sure you want it for the right reasons, for the reasons that nurture your soul and not for the ones that satisfy your body's needs for happy hormones. Now, all of this is so much easier when you have a sound belief system in place. When you have uncovered all of those limiting beliefs that are what are creating your actions, your inactions, or your reactions, when you're at peace with yourself and able to know what your true purpose is, it is much easier to be in control of your brain's hormones. You will no longer need your happy hormone cocktail to make you feel good about yourself. You will no longer be like a drug addict, acting irrationally to get what their body needs. Then it is much easier to control those urges and not to let emotional reasons cloaked as logical ones to cloud your vision. 
Now, this is how I help my clients, by uncovering those limiting beliefs that are keeping them stuck and struggling so they can go on to create a life that they love. So if you would like to dive deeper into that, into the belief systems that you have in place, so you can be in a better place to control your brain hormone urges, then jump on my calendar for a success strategy call. So that's donnajoyasha.com forward slash success dash session. I look forward to meeting you then.